Howdy campers, it's Coding Akeza here. Today I'm going to teach you, Django lovers and T11 enthusiasts, how you can incorporate models, forms, base layouts, CNCS, and much more into your website. I think we like that little intro there. Now, let's get down to business. I want a website so I can teach the world Django. So, what a better way to do that than to create a site? where I can create a lesson and users can sign up to it. Let's get going with it. So the first thing we want to do is just make a folder and ours is called Lesson Booker because that's what we want to do. And then for years you didn't know, you can use Control comma to open up a terminal. So we're gonna make sure Django is installed. So we're gonna say pip install Django. Hopefully it's installed because I'd be embarrassing if it was not. <laughs> Luckily it is. So from here we can do Django dash admin start project and what this is going to do, if you couldn't guess, is going to start as a project. So we're going to call ours Lesson Booker. As you can see, a new file folder has been created with another folder inside and a file called manage.py. So, okay, now we need to run our Django site just to make sure it's working. However, we may have an issue with this. So if we try and do manage Python, oh, have I spelled that right? I have spelled that right. <laughs> Python manage.py run server, we're going to get an error saying we can't open it. So to fix this, we're going to say, we're not going to say, we're going to open our folder, go lesson booker, and just open it one folder in. So you can see, it kind of looks the same, just a tiny bit different. Open up our fit command uh, terminal, do python manage.py run server, and we can see our server works fine, and we can control click this and open up our server down here. So you can see it's successfully installed and Django is working. Now, we don't want to see this, we want to see a home page, so let's work on one. So we're going to go back to our Visual Studio code, and we're just going to close down this for now. So, we're going to open up our lesson booker, and go to urls.py. We can get rid of all this gibberish. So, this is where the, when you go to a website, Django will check here first, to see if the URL that you've entered matches one in its list. So, for us, we want to make one called homepage. But when you go to a website, you don't really want to go to the website slash homepage. You just want to go to the website name and be sent to the homepage automatically. So what we can do, we can leave this blank and we can say comma views dot homepage. You are going to notice that none of this exists at the moment. So let's go and do that. In the same folder, we're going to create a new file called views dot py. So in here, we want from Django dot import HTTP response and we also want from Django dot shortcuts import we want a uh, response is a response request shortcut response response no ah sorry guys I made an awful error I didn't want you lot to see it so let's continue where we got to so from Django dot Oh, that's not so Django. Then go to shortcuts, import. Oh God, import, render. This will come in handy later. But for now, what we're going to do, we're going to create our function called homepage, and we're going to pass in the request thing. You always have to pass in a request, as it won't work without it. So for now, what we're going to do, we're going to return. Oh God, I can't type a HT response, and we're just going to say home page because it is our home page you notice we still have our error in here so what we need to do is say from dot which just means the same uh, folder in import and we're going to import our views so before you run anything make sure you click file save all or he might encounter some errors so control comma we're going to do hyphen manage dot py run server as you can see boom it works our server's running so you can go back over here, and if we refresh, we can see that our home page has returned to us. So let's quickly set up another page. We're going to say, make sure we have a comma, and we're going to go path, and we're going to say, we're going to set up an about page so people can find out about me and my epic Django skills. So we're going to say this, comma, views dot about, because that's what it will be called. So you can see there's no errors, but this about doesn't actually exist. So we're going to go over here, we're going to say define about, we're going to pass in our request parameter, 
and colon. I'm just going to say return HTTP response. I'm going to say about me. I love Django because I think that's very fitting. So we're going to go file, save all, and just check everything's all right. Looks good to me. So when we go over here, refresh still works. We can say come on about, and it brings us to about me. I love Django. So now let's figure out how we can create an app for our Django project. So we are going to do not close it because I actually do need it for what we're going to do next. This is going to have to do control C and this breaks it so we can continue typing in our command terminal. So what we're going to say, we're going to say Python manage. Oh God, that's not how you spell it. I'm going to say manage dot py. I'm going to say start app. And we want to call this app. Ooh, what should we call it? I'm saying we call it. We can't call it lesson book. We've already got that. So we're just going to call it book because I'm boring. So we can see over here, if you just close this, we have got um app over here called book. And it's got loads of different things that we can mess around with in a bit. But first, what we need to do is we need to hook up these um this book and lesson booker so we're going to open lesson booker we're going to go to settings and we're just going to scroll down a bit so you can see installed apps as our book is an app we're going to make sure we have oh no I don't write app in there silly me we're going to write book and this just links our app up into the settings and links everything up so we're just going to go and save this uh, okay so now in our urls what we need to do we need to link up this urls file to the book so we can do that by doing path and we want to say when we go to slash not so well when we go to book slash well we want to be taken to the all the urls that are in here we have, there's no urls file on there yet but we are going to make one so we're going to say include brackets speech marks and we're just going to say book dot urls and this simply links up our book urls to this here so let's go and do that now. I'm going to go into book, create file, and we're going to create our urls.py. So we can go and make this. So then we're going to go back over to our other one over here. And we're just going to import some of this stuff. We don't need admin. We can just copy that. Admin you need to do once. So we're going to save this. And we're just going to set up another URL patterns. I'm going to say equals. Oh, God, no, don't do that. So now we've got our URLs set up. So let's just do, just make sure it's working. We're going to do path and we'll say, when someone goes to book slash, let's say, ooh, if you say you want to view all lessons, we can say view underscore lessons. I'm going to do, make sure we do a slash, comma, views dot view underscore lessons. So obviously it doesn't exist. So let's quickly do from dot, oh, pardon me, from dot import views. That links that up. And if we go into our views, we can simply say we might, okay, we're just going to quickly import from Django dot shortcuts, not, um, not shortcuts, Django dot HTML, not HTML either, HTTP. We're going to import HTTP response. So if we're really going to mix it up with this, what do we call it again? Just so we know. Use view underscore lessons. So we're going to do view underscore lessons, passing the request parameter, and we're going to do colon. And then from here, we're going to just quickly return a HTTP response and say, here are all the lessons. Because eventually, all the lessons will be here. So we're going to do file, save all, and then we're going to press up arrow on the keyboard, and we can run through our commands. And just click the start button. Oh my god, we have an issue. So let's quickly go and fix that now, guys. So, guys, it's just a silly mistake I made. So, on here, I didn't put an S, which make sure you're typing it all incorrectly. I'm going to go here, save all. Hopefully, it all works. Lovely. So, we can go over here, refresh it to make sure everything works. Go to our homepage, make sure it works. And from here, we're going to say book and view underscore oh, lessons. So here are all the lessons. And now let's think about how we can, instead of returning this boring HTML, HTTP response, we can return beautiful web pages. So 
let's jump straight back to where we got off. So what we need to do now is create a base template so that all our pages follow this one layout and structure and then the content is kind of injected into this layout so that we can have a universal style throughout our page. So let's go on with that. So I'm just going to close some of these down just so we have a bit of space to work with. So first of all, let's also close these. What we need to do is we need to create a new folder, not in any of the folders, but in the main folder. I'm going to call this templates. Templates. And then in here, we're going to have all our we're going to have our base layout template, and we're also going to have the uh, the HTML pages that are used in Lesson Booker. So we're going to open this up, and we're going to create some files. First one is going to be homepage. Oh, homepage dot. Oh God. Homepage.html. We're also going to create a about.html because that's another page we've got. And we're also going to create a base underscore layout.html. Don't worry about this one for now. We'll come back to that later. So for now, we're just going to say we're just going to do a simple h3 and we're going to say home. We're just going to say homepage. Uh, and then, we, you know, we'll even put a little p. p this is my home page. Obviously, when you're doing your site, you can make this a lot better. So we're going to say this is my home page. And for this one, we're going to say about. I'm going to say P3. Oh, good. I can't type either. This is my about page. So we're going to quickly do what we do is. Oh, no, we can't run it yet because what we need to do is go to our lesson booker and down here in our URLs folder not our URLs, our views, we can see we're returning, we're, we're not returning the page, we're just returning the word homepage and about me, I love Django. So let's change this. So earlier we imported render. What we can do with this, instead of returning a HTTP response, we can do render. And the first re uh, parameter of render is always requests. So from, oh, it's because a little error there, because I typo, I'm gonna say request, and um, what we can do now is very, very simple, guys. We can just say homepage.html. And in here, oh no, we need to get rid of this first and replace this with render. And uh, we need to go to requests, request, and we're going to say about.html. So we're going to run this, and hopefully, if all goes to plan, it will work. So control comma, we do python manage.py run. Oh, so Pardon me, run server. So that's all good. We're gonna look over here, click refresh. Oh, it's not doing anything because that's not our page. We're gonna say here. Oh my god, template don't exist. Let's go fix this issue. So guys, the reason we're getting that issue is because we not have we have not linked our templates up in the settings. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go over to Lesson Booker, settings, and if you scroll down a bit, you're gonna notice this templates uh, section. And in here, does this is empty. What we need to do, we need to write templates because that's what ours is called. So I'm going to do file, save all. Our server is going to restart up. We can go over here, refresh, and we can see it says home page. This is my home page. And that's all good. Let's just check our about page. About. This is my about page. That is working beautifully. Obviously, it doesn't look very good, but we can work on that. So if we could close this down now. You notice how we haven't done the standard like HTML header body tags? Well, that's because we do it in our base layout. So what we can do, we can do HTML, we can do HTML5, and that is going to create a little boilerplate for us. So what we can do, we can just get rid of this, this. We can get rid of this. Um, don't need this for now, and we've got our boilerplate for a nice HTML page. So we're just going to call this. Uh, put a title in lesson booker and what we're going to do is we're going to put this in here we're going to just put some uh, html that will be used this will go onto every single page you've got so what we're going to do we're just going to say we'll do a h1 and we'll say lesson booker okay so this will be on every single site so what we can do now is well get rid of that for a start so one of the things we need to do is we need to load in some stuff from Django. So we need to load static. So what this will do is allow us to um, bring in other pages and 
give them this template. So under here, what we're going to do is we're going to say in our te these are called template tags with our curly brace, and then we're going to have our uh, percent shine. We're going to say block content, and then below it we're going to say end block. So what this will do, this will inject the other pages onto this one in this little section here. So if you go onto these ones, we can say at the very top, we can say, oh, we're going to do a little space just so it looks a bit nicer, extends base underscore layout dot html. And we're going to do this and close it off here. And then to finish it off, we are going to do another tag. We're going to do block content, and then below it, we're going to do end block. So, what this will do, this will put on. Oh, let's just uh, say for now. This will put all this content into this section of the HTML page. So, if we go over to our Django site that is currently running, and we refresh it, we haven't done this one. So, if we go to home page. That's not working. Ah! So, as you've probably realised, I'm no Django master, but I do know a fair about. But the reason this isn't working is because what is static and we haven't imported it or anything. So, we're going to close this, Let's just close this for now. And we are going to go over to our settings once again. I'm going to scroll up, and under here, first of all, we need to import OS. Just that. So, what we can do, we can scroll down to the very bottom, and we see you've got this, but let's just a bit boring so what we need to do we need to add some stuff to make our Django work basically so we're gonna say static files static files underscore does is equal to brackets we're gonna say os dot path dot join and we're gonna say base underscore der then comma assets Okay, this is what we'll do. This will link up our page and hopefully allow it to work. So what we're going to do is quickly go over to our URLs and we're also going to add this extra line. But first we need to import this thing. So what we need to do from Django.contrib oh dot oh god I can't do that. Static files import st static files underscore URL Patterns. Okay. Control. Ah, the reason that's in grey is because we have to do URLs and that should hopefully work. Static files, URL patterns. Okay, so at the bottom of our thing, we can say URL patterns plus equals, and we're just going to add static files and it's got URL patterns and close it off with the brackets. Okay, so as you may notice, we did also make this assets thing in our thingy. Well, what we can also do with this is if we close this, we'll just close this for now, we can make a new folder. Oh, that's in assets. We're going to come out of that. Make a new folder, assets. And in here, what we're going to do, create a new file, and it's just going to be called styles.css. And this is where our CSS will go. So, what we'll do, let's quickly do some CSS. So, let's quickly just say body. I'm going to say, just so we can see it's working. We're going to say colour equals red, just so we can see it. Actually, nah, no one likes red. I'm going to say colour equals lime, because who doesn't love lime? So let's now, quickly save all. And now we need to go into our base layout. So we need to link up our uh, CSS, so we can say href. So the way we link stuff in Django is by doing our curly braces, and in this our percentage for our template tags, and we're going to say URL, and then in... The, the other speech marks, just so it doesn't get confused, they're going to say static slash, oh god, pardon me, styles.css. And this will hopefully link up our pages to our CSS. So we're loading static and we're importing it. So let's go save all and let's see if this works. I'm going to go over here, python manage.py run server. Oh my god, oh my god. So let's see. It's not a tuple or a list, perhaps you forgot a trailing comma. Perhaps I did. So I'm going to scroll down. It seems I have forgot the trailing comma. I'm going to save it all. And let's see it's working again. We're running the site. We're just going to refresh this. Ignore that. Static average returns library. 
go to about. This page works, guys. This one does not. I'll be back when I found the issue. So, guys, I unfortunately made some silly mistakes. So, let's go and fix them now. So, the issues were that you do not need these speech marks around static. That needs to be on its own. And also, it's not URL. It's actually import static. And then it's like this. So, if we just check that's all right. Looks good to me. I'm going to go save all. And run here. We need to do Python manage dot py run server as you can see our server will start up again you can go over here refresh and we can see it is work that is absolutely fantastic guys <laughs> god so you can see that our our page linked up to the css and we've also got lesson booker at the top as you notice lesson booker is in the base layout and then in our home page we've just got this so while we're at it let's quickly go and link this up so we're just going to go and copy this, close down this, this and that and that. Out HTML, you can go and put this here. And we can just manually type out this last one, end block. So that is perfect. We're just going to indent it. You don't need to indent it, but I like to indent it. So you can see that's that. The server's still running. And as you notice, if we go to a about now, a lesson book at the top. So, however... You'll notice if we go to here, lesson book, what did I call the, oh, the lessons. Notice we're still returning the HTTP response. So that one's not going to be changed yet. Because if you notice in here, we haven't done the render and returned a template. So that is perfect. Now let's think about creating models for our form. So guys, before we get on, I just want to show you how you can make your website look a bit nicer. So if you look at mine, I've just changed a few things. Nothing fancy at the moment. But if you go to Google Fonts, yeah, and you go and find a, a font that you like. So I'm just going to scroll down, have a little look, think about what font I may want for my website. Obviously, you kind of want something that's readable, can be easy for the user. And I love this one here. So we're going to go and select this style. And I've already done it, but you're going to copy this. And all this will go into your base layout in your header. And not your head, not the header, but the head. And then you're also going to want to copy this CSS rules. And this, well, as you guessed, goes in your CSS. And that can make your website look 10 times better. So let's start thinking about the models that we're going to use for our website. So guys, let's make our model for our website. A model is simply a database in Django that we can use to send to the user later on and they can fill out a form and enter their details basically. So what we're going to do, we're going to go to models.py in our booking app and we're going to create our first model. So we're going to say class equals lesson source we want to make. We're going to say models.model. I'm going to finish it with a colon. So uh, naming conventions, you always kind of put a capital for your class and we want to pass in models.model to let Django know that we are creating a model. So here we're going to start writing all the different things we want in our model. So you know, we're going to create a lesson ID so that we can refer to the lesson later on. We're going to say lesson ID, we're going to say models, models, and for reference, you can guys can go to the Django API and you can read through a load of different things that you can put in here. So what we're going to do, we're going to do an auto field. So what we're going to say for this auto field, we're going to say that is a primary key equals true because that's what we need it to be a primary key because it's always going to refer to and we're also going to say that auto created is also true because we want this number to be automatically generated nothing to do with us Django's going to handle that for us so we also need if you're a lesson we also need a teacher and we may have different teachers teaching different lessons so what we're going to do is we're going to create a Oh god, not that. We're gonna go <coughs> do this, and we're gonna create some tuples. So what we might say is, we could say Mr. Hall is one of them. Actually, we'll we'll keep it simple. We'll say Kez, because that's simple. Three letters. We'll keep it to three letters. And then over here, we can say, we can say Kieran Hall. Okay, that's one of our teachers done. We can say comma and we can add another one. So we might add cha or um, Charlie. Oh god, this needs to be a thingy. So we can say 
Oh god, I can't type today. <laughs> Charlie Rochford. And let's add one more teacher. Let's go and add Geo for George Snelling. So we can say George Snelling here. So we've got our little acronyms. Not acronyms, but short down. Yeah, no, it's, no well, not an acronym, but short down version. You also have the name on the right. So we're going to finish that. And we're going to say, well, this, is, this needs to be changed to the teachers because because we now need to use that variable, let we need to, well, create one. Lesson underscore teacher is going to be a Django models dot char field. And what we're going to say, we're going to say um, max underscore length is free, which basically just means it's going to be this thing here. And then we also need to pass in is choices. And we can say lesson, as you probably guessed, teachers. So when we go into our Django admin, we will have a drop down menu where we can select what teacher is running this course. So another thing that I think we might need is a lesson date because we need to know when the lesson's happening so you don't miss out on your epic Django tutorials. So as you probably guessed again, we're going to go models dot date time field date time field. Make sure you put date time field. Date field will not work. So we can just do this. Okay. So what we're going to do is do one more thing is we're going to say the phi underscore underscore str underscore underscore close it off. What this simply means is we'll actually we'll always have to pass in self. What this means is when we if we just view it, this right if we just view it without this line in the admin it's going to be a load of gibberish. It's not going to be. It's not going to look all nice how we want it. So we can return this data that we've got here in a certain way that we want. So we're going to say return, and we're going to do a f string because they're very lovely. If you don't know f about f strings, please go and read up about them. They are fascinating. So we're going to say, um, we're just going to say lesson, and then hashtag. And we're going to do self dot lesson id so it's going to be lesson hashtag one is taught by and what we can do we can do self dot lesson underscore teacher on the and then what we can do is as you probably guess we can do do self dot lesson underscore date and that's just going to return it nice and neatly so we're going to save all that is our models done well done, guys. You've successfully created your first model. Keep up the good work. So, to now to reg register and see this model, we need to go to admin.py. And in here, we're simply going to do admin.site.register. And we are going to register our app, which is called Lesson. So, in here, we can do this. And for some reason, this is actually changed. Oh, no, it's add an extra line. Um, Visual Studio Code will sometimes import random stuff into your pro uh, program. It's not what we. It's, to be honest, it's not very helpful. So what we're going to do for we're going to do from dot models import, and we need to import lesson. And that is simply it, guys. We're going to go save it all. Make sure our server is running down here. If it's not, you can do Control Comma and get it running. Get over here. <laughs> Close this down. And probably something you haven't seen before is slash admin. And hang on a minute, we don't have username or account to get in. Well, that's one thing I forgot to do. We can do control C and we can break this. And what we're going to do, we're going to do hyphen manage dot py create super user. Oh my god, what is this doing? No such create super user. Um, what do I type in? Run server, create a super user. Super have spot that wrong? Super user. What if we try Django dash admin create super user? Create super user. Right, I'll be back when I found the issue, guys. So, guys, the issue had nothing to do with admin. There's one crucial thing that I forgot to mention, which was very bad of me. So whenever we make a model 
or we make a change in here, we have to do make migrations. So make migrations, we're going to say create model, and what we're going to do is we have to do migrate. So that's going to make all the things, and now if we try and do our create super user, we can see it's making the username. So we're going to say, well, we'll leave it blank to use Kieran. We can just press enter to skip the email, and password will say Django. Uh, Django, password is uh, short. I think if we just type it in Django, oh, bypass uh, validation, we'll bypass the validation and create our super user. So we're just going to make sure our server's running. So when we do this, we're going to go back to here. Oh god, this is, I didn't think it was working. Close that down. We're going to say Kieran, because that's our account, and we're going to say our password was Django. So when we log in, we can see that I've got our lessons here. Click this, we can see we can as an add lessons button, and yes, it's amazing, guys. We can see we got our teachers here, and I think, oh, there's one thing we didn't add, which would be really important. So let's quickly go over here. We're going to say lesson underscore name, and we're going to quickly go models dot charfield. And I'm going to say max length equals twin, just so we don't have some ridiculously long name. Save that, and make sure as we've made a change that we are doing make migrations. Um, we are just going to say quickly time zone dot now. This is because we've already got a thing in our database which is messing with it. And then we're just going to do, where is migrate? Happy days. We're going to run our server again. And hopefully when we run it this time, we're going to see a new field popped up. Okay, so we're going to have our teacher as George Snelling. And we're just going to put the um, tutorial as TK Inter. TK Inter. And we're going to say it's on Sunday. Is that Saturday? <laughs> That is Saturday, Saturday, and we're just going to say the time will be 3 o'clock, and we can save. And we've successfully added lesson 1 is taught by George, which is a shortened version, on the date. And we can add as many of these as we like. We're going to say Django, we're going to say B, uh, we'll just say today, now. And you can see it's automatically going up in numbers. So that is absolutely amazing, guys. Now we need to make a novel model so that a user can sign up for one of these classes. Let's find out how to do that. So guys, let's get straight back to this. We need to make a model so that our user can make a booking to one of our lessons. So we could might want to be, a user might be trying to book one of George's TK into lessons. I can tell you now, you don't want to miss that. So let's get straight on it. What we're going to do is going to make a new class. And we're going to call this lesson booking. So from here, we're going to do models dot model to let Django know we're creating a model. And then we're going to need a few things. Let's think about it. We need the user, the person who's signing up for the booking lesson. And we also need the lesson ID they're signing up for. So what we're going to do before we start, we're going to go from Django dot conf. And we're going to import settings because we're going to use this to get the user's um, account details. So what we can do is user, the person who's signing up for the lesson, we're going to say models dot foreign key because it's because we're still we want to link it to the other one, our other model, and we're going to say settings dot auth user underscore model, and we're also going to add a final parameter called on delete equals models dot cascade. So let's let me quick explain what this does. The first line bit parameter here, this is getting the user's account just so we can sign them up for the lesson. The second bit is equally important on delete models.cascade. This means if our lesson over here is deleted, then our booking will also be deleted along with it because we don't want to delete the lesson and then have all these bookings that are still here. So that would mess up our Django database. So the final thing we're going to have is the lesson underscore ID. And that is going to be equal to models dot, once again, a foreign key. And we're going to link it to our first key over here. So to link that, what we're going to do, we're going to say our class, so just lesson. And we're going to add on delete models dot cascade. And that is simple as guys. So like we did with the other one, we're going to do def. And we're going to say str 
then do this and then passing self as well and we're just going to make it look make it look nice when we read it in the admin so when we do return we're going to return f strings once again if you don't know about f strings please go and read up on them and we're going to say self dot user has booked lesson id and we're just going to say hashtag we'll do this hashtag self dot lesson id that is perfect we can go and save all uh, make sure we have to break here because what we need to do is we need to go and make migrations to update our database so we can do that now hopefully at least i've uh, remembered this time okay so that is done while we're at it we might as well go and run the server so we don't want to go on the server quite yet because we need to go over to our um, admin and we need to do admin oh admin dot site dot register and we need to register our uh, lesson booking so it's right here import it in and we're going to go lesson booking lovely stuff guys so we're going to save all and hopefully it is here oh my god that's dash and dev oh my god so <coughs> I was not looking at Dash and Dev, I'll tell you that now. So, we're going to refresh this, and we can see Lesson Bookings has popped up. So, if we go over to Lesson Bookings, we can go User, and that's our user that we created with our super user. And we can say Lesson ID is, oof, I want to go for the TKN tutorial with George. So, we're going to go and book that. We can click Save, and we can see Kieran has booked a Lesson um, ID... So that's fine. We've booked a lesson. I've just returned it a bit wrong. So what we can do, we can just go in our models as booked, and then we can just do this, save that. If you're uh, just a note, if you're changing like one of this, one of these um, things in the models, you don't have to migrate it. You only have to migrate if you add something new, so a new model, or if you're changing one of these. So if we go back to here and we refresh it, we can see Kieran's booked lesson one is to lesson one is taught by george on there so that's perfect so we have booked that now we need to make a form so the user so someone coming to our website can book a lesson without having to go to the admin page so guys let's make our form so the user can make a booking on one of our lessons and yes you may realize that my hair looks a bit different a bit different and i'm wearing a different top that is because programmers yes we do shower okay let's get straight into this guy so the first thing you want to do is create our form so we're going to make a close this we're going to make a new file in our booking folder and we're simply going to call this forms.py so in from here we want to go from django import and then we're just going to import forms so this allows us to create our django forms so a bit like our classes, what we're going to do, we're going to do, not our classes, our models, we're going to do class, and we're going to call it booking form, and instead of doing models.model, if you can guess it, we're going to do forms.model. Not forms.model, sorry, forms.form, you probably got that right, and I didn't. So, when we're making our booking, what do we need to, what do, like, what do we need the user to give? Well, let's go and have a look. So in our models.py, we can see when making a booking, we need the user ID. Well, just their user, not their ID. And this is done automatically through Django. Well, what's the other thing we need? And that's the lesson ID. And this is a foreign key linked to this. So if this is just a number, what we can do is we can say lesson underscore ID is equal to, we can say forms dot, and then we can do an integer field. And that is simply it. So what we can do, we can save this. And now we need to sort out our views, URLs, and we also need a template. So what we're going to do, we're going to create a new folder called template. And in here, we're going to create another folder to name, just to namespace it, just so Django doesn't get confused when looking for, if it's there, if it's trying to look for another file, it doesn't get confused. So we can say book, and we're going to create a, um, just a HTML called We'll call it lesson underscore booking dot html. So we've got this. So let's just quickly do an extend 
extends base underscore layout dot html make sure we do this properly don't want to mess up again that looks good to me and then what we're going to do we're just going to do our block content block content and then we're going to do our end block okay so in here we're just going to do some simple html we're going to say book a lesson here and then we need to do a form tag so what we're going to do we need to do form we're going to do method equals post so when we submit a form there's two ways we do it. we either make a get request or a post request a get request is when we are used to get us onto the page whereas a post request is used to submit um, information from that page so we want a post request and we want to say the action is it will be it will be this will take us to book slash then we want to go to lesson underscore booking so satisfying so this will take us to this page once we, so once we uh, submit our form it will take us back to this page which will be about be a post request and then we can do different things if it's a post request so I'll check the data and make a booking so we're going to do this another thing we're also going to need is a button we can just do um what is it uh the tags Ooh, i can't remember the tags button we can do oh that's it type equals submit and we can that's fine and then we can just do submit here and then there's two things we need to pass into our form one the first thing is a thing called a c s r f underscore token this sim is simply a token that discord checks that the user has to ensure that i'm the person submitting the data and it's not some remote guy in a different country trying to break into our django database so the next thing we need to do double brackets to actually display the data is the form and nothing we can do we can do dot as underscore p which just presents our form a bit nicer nicer makes it into cool fancy so we're going to save this and now let's just close this now the next thing we need to do is go into our urls and link that up so we can do path and when someone goes to book underscore lesson because that's what we've uh, defined here what we want to do is we want to run views dot create underscore booking so obviously you can see it's not highlighted at the moment and that is because we haven't created it so let's save all and we are going to go over to our, our views and we are just going to quickly create a view just so we can see our form working in action so we're going to say create underscore booking we're going to pass in response and for now what we're going to do is we're just going to return a render and we're going to say response and we're going to put our html tag not HTML tag but um page so we say book equals um your lesson underscore booking dot html and we're also going to pass in so we use um curly brackets for a dictionary we say form is equal to form see that's not coming up so what we need to do is from dot forms import form no 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 that's wrong from dot forms we need to import a uh, booking form and then before we send it off we need to say form is equal to uh booking form okay so when we do this we oh oh god not save as no 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 we do save all and we open up our terminal we do python manage.py run server yep looks all good to me and we're going to go over here i'm just going to reload it I'm going to come off the admin page and go to lesson book lesson uh, oh. let me try and fix this issue so guys i'm pretty sure the error is this as i said earlier um was it visual studio code sometimes imports random stuff it's as i mistyped um a response here 
it's try to import it. So response. Okay, hopefully this all works. So we're gonna refresh. There we go. So we can see we've got our le so we can book a lesson here, lesson ID, submit. It's not gonna do anything at the moment because obviously we haven't set it up to do so. So if we go back to here, what we can do is we can say if we Okay. We're gonna say if response dot method is equal to post. So this is gonna check if we're making it a post request and we've submitted the data for the form. If it is, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say we're gonna get ah probably should have kept this, we're gonna say um booking booking form response dot post and then after this we're gonna say dot not dot if form dot is valid this will check that we've entered all the fields and that well in our case there's only one field to enter and that we've put in a number uh, so if that is true what we're gonna do we're gonna get the data from that form so we can do this by doing form dot clean data well no this cleans the data for us first so basically what the clean the data means is uh, unencrypting it so that we can take the data from it and use it to make a booking so what do we want to get from this data well we want to get the id so we can do id equals data and then in square brackets we can say lesson underscore id and this will grab the id that we've entered okay so now we need to make our booking so we can do this by going booking equals lesson booking and then brackets this is what we use to create a booking we can say user equals response dot user so this is automatically handled by Django so it's going to get respondent the person who sent in the form and the user so it'd be in my case me who sent it off and then what we need to do is this bit is a bit complicated so we're going to say lesson id id underscore id is equal to id this it's quite a lot of ids so basically what this does is doing is is taking our model name so if we just get our models open quickly we can see we've got lesson underscore id which is this bit here so but as it we're using foreign keys and linking them up we can't just say lesson id equals a number because django does not like that so what we have to do we have to say lesson id underscore id is equal to the number we want which should hopefully make us our booking so from here we can just say booking dot save and this will create our booking and save it so we can go and view it in the Django admin section after. Okay guys, the final thing we need to do is if we need to do an else statement. Um no, I can if we do an else what we need to do, we need to say um form is equal to booking form. Just normally, if, you, if so, this if so, the else will run if you're going to the um, the URL for the first time and you haven't submitted any data. But if we are, what we're going to do after, if you want to do return, let's do it for now. We're going to do a HTTP response and just we're, we're going to say we will do an F string and we're just going to say booking. Okay, guys. So guys, I made one small mistake when making this, and it was just in our le lesson underscore booking .html. So in here we can see I wrote lesson underscore booking, but in our URLs the page is called book underscore lesson. So what we're going to go and do is change this to book underscore lesson. We also need to add the slash on the end. Okay. So if we go to save all, and our server is already running. So we've got our home page, we're just going to refresh this. If we go over here and we go book and then book lesson, book lesson here, we're going to say boom, submit, and then you go Kieran's book lesson one, taught by George on blah 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 blah. And if we go to here, I made sure I cleared out all my bookings beforehand. We've got our booking here. So, guys, now you've learned how to create different models link different models together with forms and allow the user to submit a form to update one of your models thank you for watching and i hope you've learned a thing or two about django